So, did you all check your email this, today? Yes. You did? Okay, all right. We have deliberated long and hard and very prayerfully over our decision in the Senate District 4 race. And this election is different from others for two reasons. One, it's off on its own. There aren't all of these people running, like the primary, where it is pretty close to impossible for most people to vet everybody. You can't, it's very tough. It was, it was difficult for us to do it. And, and we spend a whole lot of time, and we've, we have really taken that on as what we do around here. In the Senate District 4 race, all, all of the candidates are basically local. And you guys get to meet everybody who comes through here as a statewide candidate. And I think on, on some level, in some ways this is kind of like um, Iowa and Ohio, where you know voters expect to talk to people and get to know them. So we've had, we've had these candidates and we've been around them for a while. We have taken into consideration um, the experience of each of these candidates and their voting records and their campaigns. And so we have a couple of considerations in this race. One of them is to take into consideration and to honor the, the candidates and their campaigns and their supporters. Because a lot of you in this room have picked your candidate and these candidates themselves, all four in this race, are people that we have supported in the past. So we have to take, you have to honor the contribution of candidates and their supporters. We have a path to victory requirement because you have to go beyond the Tea Party to get the votes that you need to win. Because if you don't win, you can be a marvelous messenger, and you should be a marvelous messenger. But to get into office, you got to have that extra component. And, and we feel like we will, we're, we're just more able to support people in future elections if we get behind people who have a reasonable chance of winning. Not a certainty. This is not based on who has the most money. It is not based on who has the most supporters. It's a bar that we have set that we had to investigate in every single case. And of those, we have three candidates who we pass our bar for Path to Victory. Of these three candidates, all of them have unique strengths. Every one of you guys has a different profile. You have done different things with the time that you've had in office and all of you have a path to victory. So we've done two things in this race that we haven't done before. One of them is the joint recommendation of three. Gordy Bunch, Brandon Craig, and Steve Toe. The other thing that we're doing is to include a statement. This is what took a long time, and uh, I will talk about our vetting process in, in a bit, but we have included a statement about what we see as the strength of each of you candidates. Your, your strongest point. There are others, but people don't read a whole lot. And when you have a very brief amount of time, we needed to communicate what we thought were the, the strengths of each other. And we did that, I think, well. So what this does is it acknowledges your campaign. It gives those people who don't know that there's an election some information about it. And it gives them some information about it gives them some limited uh, base from which to make a decision. And we feel like that is, is our role. This is going to come down to campaign. And so if the PAC puts a check mark next to three names, it means that everyone in this room who has at this point been exposed to candidates is going to have to hustle on behalf of their candidate, right? Because think through what the parking lot will look like. You know, you're going to have multiple people arguing passionately, making a case passionately for their candidate to people who may have their minds made up, may not. Uh, but this is what we this is what we intended to do with this process. Find people who are good. They get into office, and, and when it comes to re-election in this particular case, because you all have your decisions, many of you do. Get after it. And the ones who are not informed about it, hopefully the card will help them make a decision. 
the final decision on this, as always, and as it should be, is in the candidates' hands. We exist here to help candidates make a decision, but the circumstances of this particular election make this the most effective way to do it. I want to talk a little bit about our vetting process. Our vetting committee, if you read our bylaws, says that we vote, and it has to be a, a percentage of the, of the um, board of directors. And I need to tell you that we don't always do it that way. Instead of voting, we talk it to death, frankly, <laughs> until we come to consensus on it. So this is a unanimous statement. Uh, Linda Sullivan, Bill Sullivan, John Bauman, Luke Bowen, and I met for hours and hours, hours and hours, I'm telling you. Four hours a couple of weeks ago talking about these candidates, two hours last week, and you know, many conversations in between as we went through this process of people filing and who's gonna run and who's not gonna run and what do their campaigns look like and all of that. It was a, a very carefully considered decision. So, I would like to hear at this point your thoughts about this whole thing. Some of you will be happy. Some of you will not be happy. Some of you will just say, can we just please pass this election? This is excruciating. I hope there's not a runoff, but there might be. And it's just going to continue. I don't know. You may be in all of those camps at once. But I would like to hear what you what you have to say. Gordy. <laughs> First of all, I would like to thank the uh, Texas Patriots PAC for their very thoughtful consideration and what arguably we all agree was a very difficult decision for them to come to. Too many of our uh, Tea Party groups out there made endorsements and recommendations without vetting, without interviewing, without even talking to us. And, and that really works against what this movement has been for limited government, fiscal responsibility, uh, and, and a constitutionalist approach to government. So, you know, for being a candidate where we've had these issues, it, it has definitely been uh, a difficult thing for us where we have endorsements out there that, from people that never met us, or they made endorsements of another candidate for people that, uh, and they never took the time to go through this uh, process. The Patriot Pact vetting form is very uh, in depth. The interview process is several hours, and I do appreciate the thought and, and that you guys put into this. Uh, I do think that it was the right decision for this group. And uh, I appreciate uh, your support and the support of those who have chose to support us. And I think we can have a respectful uh, election process and that we're all going to emerge from this past May 10th as friends. And if we, if we approach it the right way, you know, this will be a stronger group in the future than it is even today. So I think it was the right decision. And I thank you, Julie and John and Lynn and Bill and Luke uh, for your very thoughtful <coughs> consideration uh, for us. Thank you. Guys, this is all good, and it's all going to work out well. Um, we've all worked hard. We've been working hard with one another for the past three, three and a half years together to advance limited government, and we're going to continue to do that after May 10th. Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. So let's just all stand together, work hard with one another, and work hard for one another. Gordy and I, uh, I sent Gordy a before and after picture of a where I put the signs up the other day. I saw one of Gordy's had been backed over <laughs> in the restaurant, and, and, uh, and Luke, and, or not Luke, uh, Josh Keo and I went out and bent, you know, took the thing and fixed the iron, and I sent him a before and after picture. <laughs> that's the kind of that's the kind of work that we're going to do with one another. Right. We're going to honor one another and support one another and make sure that we run a clean, positive race and we will still be friends at the end of that. Yeah. So let's just continue to work hard, pick your candidate, go and work hard. And thank you for all you've done.
Now I know the silence <coughs> tells me that you all are thinking. <laughs> and I would like to hear what you think. Let's go home. That's a really good question. End of July, end of July, early August. Yeah. We don't know. July. It'll be really hot. It'll be really hot. It'll be during Walker. vacation Liberty School. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> That'd be great if we got it done May 10th. Amen, sister. All right. What other thoughts? Mark. I think, first of all, the, the fact that you guys have, based upon what I know that you, we go through in order to be vetted, and, if you will, approved or recommended, endorsed, that all three of these guys um, who have been in it, and, and Michael, you're just getting in at the last second. We love I'm, you. And I'm not getting in the last just, second. Just I've been in there 22 years. I understand. That's so. be exciting. All I'm saying is, <laughs> is that because these were the three main people that's been doing until the last second. And I think it's pretty unbelievable. I was I didn't know really what to expect. And the fact that you guys, that we have this many people that you can say, take your pick. That's amazing. It's a good thing. I think also that it really puts the candidates on an equal playing field. And that focus, diligence, strategy, all those things. This is cool to see whoever comes out of this really the best person for the job in Austin. I think it's cool. It's awesome. I didn't expect it. Yeah. Well, I think they're all, it's very unusual to have the candidates so close, if not identical, in their view of, of Texas, states' rights, lower taxes. They're pretty much on the same page, and I think that people have a choice of what kind of tactical person, how that person will approach it, what they're going to emphasize. It should be left up to them, you know, to the people to decide which of those candidates is going to highlight what their special interest is or uh, how they approach the legislation, how they approach serving. So I think that uh, it's not that there's an awful lot of difference, if any, in actual in the effect part on issues. So you really have a chance to pick the person that you think can most properly carry out the torch on the end of the summer. And I think that to um, you know, it, it, it's a difficult thing that you've done, but I think under the circumstances, I don't think you're going to have a lot of hurt feelings. Well, you know, it's, it, there shouldn't be. If you're thinking about the mission, and people choose who they're going to choose, I think that's the best person that can carry on that agenda. Uh, you're not going to create the vision of this person. My greatest fear for the half and some of the other groups is that all this infighting. You know, and then people get, if you don't do this with someone, that's okay if there's enough of a difference that you make a choice. But in this case, I think we're all very different. And we're very fortunate to have that in your history. That's true. That's absolutely right. Have you ever done this before, Julie? We have never made a joint recommendation. And it's because these people are here. If if they were, if these were statewide candidates, what would be the point of us being here if we didn't make some sort of statement? If, when we work hard and we know more because you guys have not had access to the candidates, then the margin where we can help you is greater. In this case, how, how, how do you come to this meeting and, and talk to these people and not an opinion if you're interested in politics. So out of respect for those of you who are in this room and who will back these candidates, we have done that. And out of respect to the candidates who worked hard in their offices. But there's going to be, there will be many people who don't have much information and it is going to come down to their campaign. And that's where we do play a role. If you don't have any information about this race, then we want to give you a little bit. They're all better than Tommy Williams. Amen. <laughs>
All right, what else? I would just like to point out that I was an empathetic. Let's talk about that, because when you called me to say that you were going to get into this race, we had a conversation about your path to victory, because that is always the hurdle. And we talked about what you were going to do, and the fact that your main campaigner, who you think the world of, your daughter Lauren, was out of the country. We would not have... And let me add, give me another opportunity. When you hire someone, which we are essentially doing, are you required to interview everyone who submits an application? You are not required to interview everybody who submits an application. So we have to make some cutoffs. And for us, this is a big, big deal. We are one of the very few tea parties that say path to victory is important. Why would we back someone and put all this effort into it? if there is not the mathematical possibility of a winning. Now you have good name ID, and it may be we are completely wrong, and this runoff is over, we don't have a runoff, and you take it just on the first day. It could happen, it could happen. But as we look at it right now, the path to victory <coughs> was not only money, it was name ID, it was coordination, it was how you discuss the campaign, each one of you, when we made the determination that three Pass the bar, and that's what we're going to go. Okay. Other questions? I just, I, I just want to say that I'm not too biased, but we really good for you guys. It was very hard. <laughs> I don't know what trouble we're at this point. A lot of prayer, a whole lot of prayer and thinking. But I really mean it. How much more do you guys do? It is very, very hard. It's like Yes. Yes, 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 yes. All right, well, we appreciate that, and we will, we really do appreciate that. This is not going to be easy, folks. This is the, this is, this is the worst case scenario in some, in some ways. But it is the best thing to do. And our decision on this was unanimous. All right, so. Any other comments? You can comment afterwards. I'm just giving you this forum right now. Bill? Bill, you have something to say, I know. Me? You? <laughs> <laughs> okay, what's, what was the most interesting thing is that there's a couple of things going on here. And one of them, this is a general election. And evaluations you have to make are on the basis of it being uh, a general election. And there's wild cards out there. And you have to take a look at the races to see who's who has capacity to approach the wild cards. Uh, the other thing is it's a lot bigger than any other race that we've had before because we've been restricted to Montgomery County. Now you're going to something as big as 600, 640,000 people, which is a little bit different. So you have to take a look at that in terms of everybody that's putting it up. So every person who came in there spent over two, two and a half hours explaining what they were going to do and how they were going to do it. And it was interesting to sit there as somebody who's been involved in processes like this before to see the three different approaches. So when you, when you get to the end of the day, when the people all have, <coughs> all have, you know, they have different, very different strong points. You've got, you got Steve's very passionate conservatism. You've got uh, the business acumen of, of Gordy and his performance in the, the township. And you have uh, Brandon, his, his le legislative ability, et cetera, and, and his record in, in the legislature. All those things are different things that have to appeal to the voters. So when you ultimately make the decision, you take a look at the path to victory. All of them have your values. They all have three different plans. They all have the resources to implement them. So then we'll see who has the path to victory. That's what we're going to find out. But whatever happens, the new senator will be about 50 times better than the old one. <laughs> so at the end of the day, we all win. Yeah. All right. Thank you, folks. Thank you so much. And we will see you again soon.